Our next topic, how much risk of bleeding do SSRIs pose? A recent meta-analysis concluded that the overall bleeding risk is increased at least a third, but with a fairly wide range based on the review of a large number of studies. So we're going to talk about four different types of bleeding risk and what we know to date regarding SSRIs. Do SSRIs increase the risk for gastrointestinal bleeding, perioperative bleeding, postpartum bleeding, and cerebral bleeding or hemorrhagic stroke? So taking first, do SSRIs increase the risk of GI bleeding? There have been many studies, but they are all retrospective or cohort studies. They are not randomized controlled trials, and the data are very mixed. There have been a number of studies showing a relatively large increase in relative risk, at least a doubling. There's an equal number of studies showing a small increased relative risk, say 1.3 times the risk of gastrointestinal bleeding in patients not receiving SSRIs. And yet, there are an equal number of studies showing no increased risk at all. Fortunately, none of the studies have demonstrated increased mortality from SSRI-associated gastrointestinal bleeds, and that's reassuring. Another conclusion that comes from a review of the literature is that whatever the risk is with SSRIs for GI bleeding, the risk does increase considerably if the patient is taking multiple antiplatelet drugs. So an example would be a patient who, following myocardial infarction, develops depression and is prescribed an SSRI, but is already taking aspirin or another non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug, as well as the antiplatelet agent clopidogrel. The risk of GI bleeding with SSRIs is also increased in patients who are infected with Helicobacter pylori, the bacteria that poses a risk for peptic ulcer disease. There have been a number of meta-analyses that have tried to merge all this data and draw some general conclusions. And what they've generally concluded regarding gastrointestinal bleeding is that there probably is a relative increased risk somewhere between one and a half and double the risk in patients not on SSRIs. That this relative risk is even higher, probably four times, on the order of four times as much if the patient is taking a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug or an antiplatelet drug. The risk is not increased if the patient is prospectively treated with an acid suppressant, like a PPI, a proton pump inhibitor. But the absolute risk of harm from a gastrointestinal bleed is really quite small. The number needed to harm for upper GI bleeding with SSRIs in low-risk patients was 3,177 and still as high as 881 in high-risk patients. And I'll talk in a minute about who are high-risk patients. There's been much less study of SNRIs, but the little information we have to date suggests they may not increase the risk. What about if SSRIs are given to a patient who's also taking the blood thinner warfarin? Does that increase their risk of GI bleeding? The reports are mixed. I'm reassured that the U.S. Food and Drug Administration does not warn of this interaction. I would avoid prescribing fluvoxamine in a patient on warfarin because fluvoxamine does increase warfarin levels by inhibiting 2D9, but that's a different mechanism than interfering with platelet function. There appears no increased risk with heparin or anoxaparin, and to date, I have been unable to find any information, any cases of SSRIs causing gastrointestinal bleeding with the newer anticoagulants like atixalate, dibigatran, rivaroxaban, and apixaban. And given how often SSRIs are prescribed and the fact that these drugs don't act via platelets, they probably are safe to administer together. So key points with regard to the risk of gastrointestinal bleeding with SSRIs include there have been many studies, the data vary, but there does seem to be a one and a half to doubling increase in the relative risk, but the absolute risk of a gastrointestinal hemorrhage remains small. The risk is increased with concomitant non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. Caution is advised in patients who are taking multiple drugs that can impair platelets. And what I would call high-risk patients, and those are patients with marked thrombocytopenia, for example, a platelet count under 25,000, patients with that low a platelet count are at risk for spontaneous bleeding. And I would also urge caution in the prescription of SSRIs in patients who have a normal number of platelets but who have dysfunctional platelets, like in the inherited disorder von Willebrand's disease.
and should mention that there are rare cases of SSRIs themselves causing thrombocytopenia. Next, let's review, do SSRIs increase perioperative bleeding? Here, too, the studies are all retrospective. or cohort studies, there are not any randomized controlled trials. And on the slide, I've included some exemplary studies. The top half of the slide shows studies that demonstrated varying degrees of increased risk of perioperative bleeding. And the bottom half of the slide shows studies that found there was no increased risk at all. Across all these studies, serious bleeding was quite rare. And because these were not randomized controlled trials, there are many potential confounding factors that makes it difficult to interpret. A systematic review of 13 studies concluded that serotonergic antidepressants increase the risk of perioperative bleeding with odds ratios between 1.2 and 4. But again, the actual amount of blood lost was small. So the bottom line here for perioperative bleeding risk with SSRIs is that there probably is a small increased relative risk. The absolute risk is quite small, and it's unlikely clinically significant, except in those high-risk patients that I was talking about when we reviewed gastrointestinal bleeding, namely patients with thrombocytopenia, patients with platelet dysfunction, or patients on multiple antiplatelet drugs. What do we know about whether SSRIs increase the risk for postpartum bleeding? This has been much less studied, but the few data we have are mixed, both data showing an increased risk and data showing no increased risk. And a systematic review that tried to look at this systematically concluded the same thing, that we're not sure. But just as an illustration of how difficult it can be interpret such studies, another recent systematic review found that antidepressants were associated with a small increased relative risk, but it was unrelated to how much they influenced serotonin, which tends to suggest that that increased risk may have nothing to do with the antidepressants at all. So bottom line for postpartum bleeding, there are few data. What data we have point to a small increased relative risk at most a very small absolute risk, unlikely that it's clinically significant except in high-risk patients. We generally do not recommend stopping an SSRI shortly before delivery or cesarean section because this increases risk for the precipitation of a postpartum depression. Do SSRIs cause central nervous system bleeding, in other words, a hemorrhagic stroke? Here, too, the evidence for SSRIs increasing stroke risk is mixed and somewhat difficult to interpret. So one meta-analysis found a small increased risk, 1.4 times the risk in patients who are not taking antidepressants, of both ischemic and hemorrhagic stroke. Well, if SSRIs caused hemorrhagic stroke by interfering with platelet function, one would not expect an increase in ischemic stroke, and if anything, one would expect a reduction. Another study found a more than doubling of stroke risk with SSRI. Finally, another study showed that after patients had had an ischemic stroke and were started on an SSRI for post-stroke depression, they had an increased risk of GI bleeding, no increased risk of intracranial hemorrhage, and a reduction in cardiovascular events. One reason for the murkiness in this data, the difficulty interpreting it, is that depression and anxiety themselves have been independently associated with risk for hypertension and risk for stroke. And so antidepressants appearing to be associated with an increased risk of stroke may really be a marker for depression and anxiety as the cause of increased risk. Finally, one study showed a very small, that tried to control for this effect of depression and anxiety, found a very small relative increased risk with SSRIs versus tricyclics. So to summarize the overall question of do SSRIs increase any type of bleeding risk, there probably is some small increased risk. The absolute risk appears to be very small and not clinically significant in most patients. It's rarely serious, but caution is warranted in high-risk patients. Those with thrombocytopenia or platelet disorders, those with coagulopathy, those who are in the throes of an acute intracerebral hemorrhage, and patients on multiple antiplatelet drugs.